The former leader of the Labour Party, Mark Latham, has joined One Nation and will run for the New South Wales Parliament. Mr Latham quit federal politics in 2004 after he led the Labour Party to defeat against John Howard. During the Longman by-election, he recorded robocalls for One Nation and he'll run for Pauline Hanson's party in the New South Wales Upper House on a campaign focusing on immigration, congestion and overdevelopment in Sydney. And Mark Latham joins us now from Sydney. Uh, so, Mark Latham, welcome. Why One Nation? Thank you. Well, I think they've got the values and ideas that are consistent with solving long-standing problems in New South Wales. If you're talking about the congestion in Sydney, which has become unbearable, the city's become dysfunctional with overpopulation, overdevelopment driven by the immigration program, one nation would say bring back the immigration numbers to a reasonable level, level give Sydney a breather, a break from big population growth so that job services and infrastructure can catch up and also take a strong stance against overdevelopment. We need a policy of urban containment. So too the problems in the New South Wales school system which has uh, gone backwards, uh, political fads have taken over the curriculum, One Nation would say come back to basics and improve teacher quality. Uh, electricity prices have doubled in New South Wales over the past decade because of the concentration and emphasis on renewables. One Nation would say we'll diversify and broaden the energy base, in particular break the ban on nuclear in New South Wales. And also uh, something I feel very passionate about. Uh, get rid of political correctness and divisive identity politics, uh, judge people on their individual merit instead of race, gender and sexuality. So they're all uh, values that can solve these problems that Labor, the Liberals, the Nationals and the Greens have neglected for a long, long time in New South Wales and I aim in this campaign to put policy meat on those bones to provide some common sense solutions to this wide range of problems in the state. So how did your association with One Nation come about? Did you approach Pauline Hanson or was it an offer from her? Well, there's been a discussion over an extended period of time and I've looked at uh, the craziness of uh, left to centre politics in recent times where, you know, when I first joined the Labor Party in the late 70s, the emphasis would have been on poverty and treating people on merit. And now they've been thrown out the window, replaced by an emphasis on race, gender and sexuality, things that we thought then were immaterial to a person's character, work ethic, community contribution. So if left to centre politics has gone crazy with a deeply flawed social justice strategy, then I think a party like One Nation, which is pro-merit and anti-discrimination of any kind, has, uh, has a lot going for it. Now you're both strong personalities. Are you going to be able to toe the line when Pauline Hanson, as leader, tells you what to do? Well, Pauline's the federal leader, I'm the state leader, and we're both getting on with the job. And the area where we've got the policy synergy that's so important for the future of, of Sydney, a city I've lived in all my life, is, is on this question of urban growth and, and immigration. The federal policy is to bring the numbers back closer to the 20th century average of um, 70,000 a year instead of the current level closer to 200,000 permanent immigration program and at state level a planning policy that contains growth that uh, puts a, a clamp on overdevelopment that limits the crazy extent of urban sprawl in Sydney. So those policies combined are the best way by far of ending the massive issue of congestion and, and, and a dysfunctional city in Sydney and people in New South Wales have got a unique opportunity. These federal and state elections will be close to each other and they can send a message to existing governments that Sydney needs to be a livable city into the future and voting One Nation at federal and state level achieves that goal. Mm. Sure, state leader, but should Pauline Hanson be nervous? Do you have ambitions to take over from her as federal leader? No, I don't. One of the reasons I'm running at state level is my experience uh, over the past decade uh, with government schools in particular, Roz, I can assure you there's a lot of problems in the education system. And unfortunately, Labor, the National Party, the Liberals, the Greens have all supported these political fads. You, you had the absurdity of Adrian Piccoli, a National Party minister nationally, supporting the teachers, the Left Wing Teachers Federation, and what they've done in the downgrading of standards, the curriculum, teacher quality, rewards for teachers in New South Wales. So I'm sorry, when the National Party becomes as left wing, as the Greens and the Labor Party in New South Wales, schools are bound to go backwards. And, and tragically, that's what's been happening. Mm. New South Wales schools and their results have been going backwards, not only on international league tables, but domestically compared to other states and territories. So I'll have a big focus 
in my campaign on common sense solutions to get back to basics in the school system. And this is a problem that, that banks up. Um, and unfortunately, you won't see the, the, the full negative consequences of this deterioration in New South Wales schools for perhaps a decade or two to come. So we've got to solve the problem now and make sure that our school quality is as high as any system in the world. But you almost became a Labour Prime Minister, didn't you? Now you're joining One Nation. That's a, a mammoth turnaround. Some cynics might say it's just a grab for power. Well, the cynics need to get out and talk to the people on the street, in communities, who say, what's happened to the Labour Party? They used to believe in solving poverty and treating everyone on merit. Now they're obsessed by race, gender and sexuality and the absurdity of this notion of white male privilege. When I became a Labour Member of Parliament in 1994, you had to pick out the typical group in the community that were disadvantaged would have been a white bloke in a public housing estate restructured out of manufacturing jobs in the 80s. Now that person is labelled as white male privilege, an absurdity, it builds resentment from people in genuine need and it's a social justice disaster in terms of strategic thinking. So, you know, I can't uh, support that kind of nonsense. I still believe in merit. I still believe in addressing poverty and genuine dis financial disadvantage in the community and I think divisive identity politics is primitive and a losing strategy for anyone left of centre and One Nation I see it very much as a party that believes in merit and saying that discrimination of any kind, any kind in the community is bad and the only way you can run a fair society and live up to the Australian values of a fair go is to promote the principles of merit, meritocracy. Finally, would you like to set up your own party? Have you considered that? No, I haven't considered that. Uh, I haven't considered that at all. I've, I've announced that I'm running as the state leader of Pauline Hanson's One Nation and topping the uh, ticket for the Legislative Council ballot in March next year. And we'll be hoping to field candidates in the lower house. And most importantly, Ros, give the people of New South Wales an alternative. Because at the moment, Labor, Liberal, the Greens and Labor are in unison. Their policies are almost identical on schools, energy, immigration, urban congestion, political correctness, divisive identity politics. There's no choice. There's no choice for people. So it's healthy for our democracy to have a choice, a policy platform that I'll be advancing based on common sense and getting back to some of the basics of, uh, of good gov governance. Mark Latham, thank you.